Hello, and welcome back to the final segment of our unit, Building a New Nation. Today, we will be studying something separate from the Founding Fathers and documents that we have looked at previously. We will be exploring why and how the Americans began to settle land further west after the American Revolution. But first, today's learning targets are the following. I can identify the reasons for westward migration, and I can describe the route that many Americans took when moving west. After the American Revolution, Americans were no longer bound to follow the orders of the king. Of course, this was what they wanted all along. We've talked about that before. One of those orders that they really didn't like was from the aftermath of the French and Indian War. According to the king's command, they were not allowed to settle in the land they had gained from France to the West. That land had been left for Native American tribes who'd been displaced by the Americans over the years. Now that they were their own country, they could do what they wanted with the land. If you look at the piece of the map on the right of this screen, you can see where it says Proclamation Line of 1763. This was the border between where the Amer Americans could settle and where they were not allowed to settle based on the king's command. But why would they go to the trouble of moving just because they could? In that time period, it wasn't as simple as packing up the car and driving to the new house. When moving into new lands, it could take weeks to get there by carriage, and then they would have to build a new house and community. So let's look at some of the issues that would have made a big move worth the hassle. First, tobacco is very harsh on the land. It absorbs nutrients from the soil without ever replenishing them. So after years of growing tobacco on the same land, the soil was bad and wouldn't grow crops like it used to. Second, the cotton gin, pictured here, created new opportunities in the South. Lastly, the mechanical reaper allowed more wheat to be harvested with fewer workers, leaving many Virginians looking for a job. For all of those reasons, Virginians and many people from other states began traveling westward and to the south into undeveloped land. Immediately after the war, Virginia had been the most populated state in America. By 1860, though, it had dropped to fifth because of all the people moving elsewhere. So how did they get where they were going? Leaving Virginia and heading west meant traveling through the Appalachian Mountains which was nearly impossible with their wagons. As a result, they had to travel through the Cumberland Gap with its narrow and steep paths. One group of people who went on these treks against their will were slaves. As Virginians moved, they took their slaves with them, spreading the practice of slavery into the new territories and states. This became known as the Second Middle Passage, after the first middle passage of slaves being brought against their will to America. It originally got its name because the trip from Europe to America was the middle route on the triangular trade route. This became a national issue and would ultimately lead to yet another war. We will begin studying that war in our next unit. Once again, you've made it to the end. Take a moment to self-reflect. If you can answer the next two questions, you are ready to go. Number one, what three reasons did Virginians have for moving westward? And number two, what path did Virginians take to move west?